Hey guys, Targo was talking about FPV and we're getting ready to do a, uh, on the Sector 5 V3, getting ready to do a TBS, um, uh, uh, my God, lost my mind, a uh, TBS receiver. Uh, we're gonna put the Crossfire Nano in. And so uh, I'm gonna do that right now. You can see it here. Uh, I had already opened the box, this is brand new. And then I realized I would like to do a video on it. Um, so let me just clean up my table here a little bit. It's been a little, a little nuts, I guess. But uh, all right, so here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, find my screwdriver, if I can. Sorry, one second. Screwdriver and my coffee. So here we go, coffee and screwdriver. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these out. And I'm gonna tell you right now ahead of time that uh, there are a few things on here that I'm going to try to not complain about, uh, but I will tell you right now that some of the things that I do, I did find a problem with is, and it's not a big deal, I guess, but it's, it's the way that this thing is done where it's mounted on 3D printed material. Uh, I'm not really a fan of that, um, and I'm not sure why HGLRC did that, but you know, I've got to be honest here. Um, I don't like seeing, for example, these are not... Uh, um, Sorry, let me clean that up. So these don't go all the way through, right? You're not fastening the carbon fiber to the um, stand. You're actually fastening it to the 3D material. And then from there, you're fastening it to the stand. I don't like that kind of a connection. In the front, it's even more like that because you're going, the top and the bottom, both are 3D printed material. So you're fastening through that, which to me is, it's just not solid. There's a little bit of flex in there that I don't like to see. Uh, and you know, it, it does give me a little bit of concern, but um, it's not the end of the world. I'm just making it clear that I would have rather seen, uh, uh, like here you see, you can see you here on the XT60, for example. Let me pull this off. You see on the XT60, um, you, they've stopped the print short, so it's not able to go, it's not able to go all the way through. Now I assume this might be to stop it from being able to slide up and down, but honestly, um, if you just made it tighter, it wouldn't, and it's not really gonna move anyway. Uh, and even if it did move, it wouldn't be detrimental to the build. So the entire thing has just kind of got me off a little bit as to, as to this. I don't like the way when you fasten it, you can literally keep cranking the screw and all you're gonna do is just flattening out the 3D print. I like the screw, uh, I like to be solid, more solid, but all right. So anyways, this is here for the purpose of getting a TBS uh, Crossfire installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Um, and let me find my razor blade so I can put this open. Let me take the GPS off there, which we need to do. Where the heck did my razor blade go? Well, don't know. Don't know, so I'll just use scissors, I guess. All right. All right, so there you go. Give me one second to load my config page up. on uh, uh, beta flight when we're done. Okay, so anyways, so here's our, uh, here's our receiver right here. And I will tell you that the way this wiring goes is this is gonna be the RX uh, going out to the TX on the flight controller. This is gonna be the TX going out to the RX on the flight controller. And then this is gonna be your five volt and this is gonna be your ground, okay? So let's go ahead and prep that up real quick. Get our flux pin. Okay, and we've got our solder iron ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tin the uh, receiver up. And again, starting from top to bottom, it's uh, the TX, uh, the RX on the receiver is the top one, and that's gonna go to the TX on the UART one. And then the TX, uh, the second pin is the TX on the receiver is gonna go to the RX on UART one, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get that ready. Now we're gonna use the existing wire that HCLRC has provided. 
And so this is the uh, GPS wire here, and this is gonna be the receiver wire. You can see they've already used uh, R1, uh, and that's gonna be uh, their input here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add the white wire, okay? Now we're gonna put that as for the TX1. So oops, if I can, oh, my fat fingers can't open these bags, I guess. So let me just kinda cut around that, open it up. And we're gonna have some heat shrink in here as well. And I do like the heat shrink TBS uses. It's super quick uh, and it's, 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 I don't know if it's a four to one heat shrink or what, but it's definitely um, top notch there. All right, so let's go ahead and prep the board now. So we're gonna go ahead and come over here to uh, UART uh, TX on UART one. And we are going to put a little bit of solder on there so we can tin that up. There we go. And I will take the white wire that's right here. And solder that right there. All right, now that's done. We now have the four wires that we need. Okay, and remember the uh, the TX from the board, which is the white wire, is going to go to the RX on the receiver, which is the first hole, and then second, and then third and fourth. Okay, so I'm going to now go ahead and uh, cut all these wires to match in length. All right, so let me do that real quick. Okay, then let me go ahead and strip these. One, two, three, and four. Okay, with that said, let's do the following here. Go ahead and tin them back up. Uh, let me put the flux paste on our flux pen. Makes that solder it here a lot better. So let me just rub it down there. There we go. And then twist your cables up. Make sure those strands are twisted up pretty well. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and tin them. And I'm just gonna use this alcohol wipe that I was using earlier to clean the table. I'm gonna use that to just kind of hold over this and make sure that uh, I don't get any uh, any mess here on the board, All right, so let me put that there. Flux pen away. We'll get some get the solder that we had. All right. So as a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna get my goggles here because I can't. You know me, these cruddy eyes. So let me just get the goggles. Put these goofy suckers on and get going. Okay. Okay, there we go. All right, give me one second. That's the lunch call. Lunch is ready. So I gotta get going here in just a minute. Okay, so you can now take the heat shrink. Okay. Cut that uh, about like that, it's good. Okay, get these two things out of the way. Let's get that open. All right, let's get the soldering, shall we? Okay, so again, the TX is going to the first pin here. So we go ahead and get that ready and get our tweezers and get going with this one. So TX will go to first pin one. The wires are a little long. I'm gonna cut these wires down just a little bit. They're a little long. TBS does give you a little bit more room there than um, some other receivers uh, before you hit any other pads, but or other components, I mean, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just shorten these down anyway. Make sure not to get any of those into the motor areas when you cut them. All right, so there we go. So now we go ahead and solder it, and we're just gonna do, in order, we'll go one, and then we'll go to the 
to three and four. And there you have it. It's all done. Everything looks good. So at that point, all we have to do now, let me just verify everything else is good. Yep, everything else is good. Now we're just going to bring the heat shrink down. Okay. Cover it like this. I'm going to line this up a little bit. Make sure we get these wires twisted up pretty good at least. Just like that. Okay. And now I'm just going to heat shrink that. Heat that up. Soldering is finished. I'll turn the iron off. I need to change the temperature here. I had this up to do a soldering earlier, so removing a chip off there, doing a MOSFET replacement. So I gotta lower the heat. There we go. Let's just do this real quick. See how quick that does? I mean, that's awesome heat shrink. That's how you can tell the good quality heat shrink from the crappy stuff. So this is really good quality heat shrink. It shrinks real quick. And you can save that extra piece, you know, when you cut it. Okay, so there's that. Now I will disconnect the VTX so we can make sure this lights up without interrupting our video feed. our um, smoke stopper so we make sure we got a safe connection here and all we want to do is make sure that our uh, there we go we got our lights everything looks good that's all I needed for that part okay and as far as mounting this antenna there's a couple ways we can do it um, but uh, what we'll do here is we'll come down here and utilize uh, their mount here let me just do that. I guess I can take this off. Hold on. Let me see if I can do that real quickly. Lift this up. Disconnect that MMC actual quickly so it doesn't get damaged. We'll take the antenna. They didn't leave a gap, so I'm going to assume that we'll just come over it. So they did leave a gap there. There we go. Do just like that. Put that back down. Okay, bring this back down. Make sure to put our MMCX back in. There we go. Bring that to the bottom there. And then as far as the receiver goes, I'm just going to put it on the top plate for right now, underneath the top plate right here. Or actually, you know what? Let me just leave it. Um, I need to put that wire back on one second. Let me do that real quickly. And then uh, you can see that that wire there, I need to fasten that back down. Let me get this ordering iron on. And then what we'll do is uh, I'll leave it here and allow the customer to kind of move it. He may want to put it in a specific area. Let me make sure this gets back on there properly. Okay, there we go. So we'll just leave this here for right now. Plug the VTX back in. All right, and then put the top plate back on. Go ahead and hook up our GPS and hook up our camera. We'll do the camera first. cables. Place this back down. Bring this around for the GPS. Tuck everything in for now. 
and leave that part for the customer to decide how he'd like to do it. And we're just going to close this up. All right, so let me get going with that. All right, and there you go. So everything's closed up now, tightened down, and we have everything set back up, so we're good to go. So I, when the customer gets it, he can put the uh, TBS, if he wants to put the receiver in a specific spot, but everything else is back to normal. We've got our GPS back up, everything's screwed down, everything's set up normal, okay? So there you go, guys, that's how you do that. Uh, hope that helps. If you guys are looking to do that, if you have any questions, you can always join our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Cyclone FPV. And then please, as always, uh, follow us on our Facebook page and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Other than that, God bless. Be safe. Spend time with your family, guys. You never know how much time you have left, so please make the most of it. Trust me. Things I'm finding out this week, uh, the, the, you need to go back and make sure to hug everybody you love and just tell them, hey, what's up? All right, guys. Other than that, uh, safe flying. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. Thank you.